In this video, we're going to dive a little bit more into DGENGEON and take a look at some of the information that's included within the file itself and even have a handy way of visualizing some of this information in MATLAB. So for a start, let's bring up the DGENGEON file that's produced and take a look at what's in here. So it will tell you the number of components and it will start with the first one in the model, give you the ID, some of the information associated with it, and then it will start breaking it down. And so in this case, we're looking at a surface representation of all of the nodes in that surface. And so in this case, we're looking at the X, Y, and Z coordinates and the U and W coordinates for each one. So this is broken down uh, pretty detailed. We're starting at basically U equals zero right at the nose and going all the way around in W. And then it does it again and again and again and again. So for every single UW coordinate on this aircraft it's giving you XYZ locations of those nodes. So this goes you know, pretty far into the weeds. So if we scroll down a bit and come to the next set of information, we have these surface faces. And so we've got the normals in X, Y, and Z for each of those. And we have the area of each one of these patches as well. So we can go down, get some more information. And so we're still dealing really with the the um, surface representation of that pod in, at this level. Then we come down and we start talking about plate representation. So in the plate, if we expand this out just a little bit, we've got all sorts of goodies in here. So let's scroll up so we can actually see what's going on in this file set. So we have uh, the plate where we have all the different normals and we, we're gonna have the locations of all the X, Y, and Z. We're gonna have camber, there's yeah, there's lots of stuff in here. We won't belabor the point of going through every single little bit of detail in the file itself. But suffice to say, there's quite a lot of information associated with each of these levels of degeneracy. We come down to our stick representations. You can see we've got our leading edge X, uh, Y, and Z, trailing edge X, Y, and Z. And even when we're dealing with the CG of the individual shells, solids, thickness to cord ratio, etc. Lots of information in here. But let's go farther down and look at the final representation of this pod, which is a point. And so we have volume, wetted volume, area, wetted area, shells, etc., And even the CG locations of the shells and the solids. So that information is broken down farther and farther and farther and farther. So great, you have this information, what can you do with it? Well, there are lots of different analyses which would use that kind of information, but a handy way of looking at some of the information that's in here is to use the MATLAB plotter that's included with OpenVSP. It's a .m script, and you can run it on these DGEN formats. And so this is the surface representation where you're looking at the surface patches themselves and the surface normals. So you can see where all these arrows point. You can check for flip normals. This is a way of kind of diagnosing if something has gone horribly wrong in your surface representation. Maybe you've got a component flipped inside out, for example. If we open up the plate representation, this is basically what VSP arrow wants. So you can look for things like directly overlapping components, intersections where they are smack right on top of each other here in this cruciform. Those can lead to issues in VSP arrow, but for the most part, it handles it fine. But this is another handy way of looking at the information in that file and getting an idea for what it actually is. We can break this down even farther. And our stick representation, again, shows the bounding lines that define these surfaces. So now we've got our leading edge and trailing edge coordinates for the wings and our bounding curves for this body type. So those are handy ways of visualizing what's going on in this DGENGEOM format, where you can look for problem areas, look for missing nodes, look for things that are kind of out of place. And it's a nice way of debugging when you really need to go in and look at stuff. But otherwise, it's just a handy way of visualizing these subsequently, let's say, simpler versions of the geometry of the aircraft. And so hopefully that gives you a nice way of going in and diagnosing any issues or just looking at your model in different ways.